Sagittarius. Hello, Sagittarius, and this is your uh, forecast for June of 2013. And this month there is a big focus here on relationships, whether this is emotional or romantic relationships or how you relate with other people, which is the seventh house. How do you come across? What are you sharing? It's not just what you're taking in, but what are you sharing? How is this balancing up here for you? And I think that this month is a good month for you, a little bit better than perhaps what June, no, excuse me, May has been, because May seemed to have been very busy on uncluttering uh, your life, uncluttering your routine. Uh, whether that be on a practical level or whether that was also on an emotional level, but it was like really uncluttering. And now it's kind of like coming up over the, uh, the descendants, which is the equator there on your chart, coming back up into the light, out of that dark season, the underside of your chart. They're all lifting and rising to the top of your chart. So you're gonna feel your energy too, lifting and rising. Uh, the sun is there, the new moon is there, and uh, we also have uh, uh, Venus there for at least a few couple of days before she moves out of this space, out of the seventh house of relationships, um, and into your eighth house of uh, money, uh, but other people's money, uh, how you can work with or uh, work for other people. Uh, so it's not just the personal income, which definitely can be affected this month, and we'll get back to that. Uh, but it's also how you can work through something to obtain more. Uh, it could be with setting up contracts, royalties, commissions, um, subcontractors, for example. Uh, it's like having one goal here and then bringing a new factor in from a different area. It, it's going to be a little exciting because I see you doing something there that might be a little creative and even for you somewhat a little bit out of the norm like a new type, whatever routine that can be. But yes, we have here on the top of the month, uh, starting off on the first with somewhat of a surprise. Uh, there is the sun and Uranus there. And the sun is you. And uh, Uranus will always come with something unexpected. And for you, that Uranus is in the fifth house. So it has something to do with either your children or it can come from an angle with something that is related to fun and leisure, uh, hobbies, uh, something that, that you don't feel is hard because it's definitely not labor or work, but, but something you play with. Like I said, hobbies, something like this. Now, having this connection coming up out of the blue to your son, it could be working with somebody because the son is currently moving through that seventh house of partnership. Okay, so you can might come to a new agreement. And then I see talks coming in right behind this here on the third. You got Mercury communication here with vision or dreams because it's with Neptune. And it's in a very good angle there, solid with Neptune, with vision, really communicating what it is you see and would like to do. And uh, that same Mercury is communicating to Saturn. And Saturn grounds everything. And Saturn for you here is in the 12th house. So it's more like and the 12th house being a dream state because ruled by Neptune, right? Um, is actually talking about something you've been wanting to do for a long time. It's been resting. It's been laying there. Uh, so now might be the time to bring this up and out. And maybe it's going to start gelling, coming together because Saturn gives everything form. Okay, Mercury can think. Venus can feel, but Saturn will realize the thoughts and the feelings. And that may heal you from certain other things in the past where, where things have been a little challenging, but it's like from this, the shift is so beautiful. And this um, Venus, uh, which was in uh, your seventh house for partnership, uh, until the third, so it was there all of May, now moves into your eighth house of uh, other people's money, commissions, royalties. And your focus is going to be on that. So maybe some of you are looking to earn perhaps more or most of your, 
monthly income, excuse me, <clears throat> more or most of your monthly income could be coming from a source that gives you some type of percentage. Um, whether you're looking at a, a, a certain interest, uh, or whether it is a commission-based something, but I, I'm seeing how this could definitely put things together for you, like affiliate marketing, for example. You know, you, you get splits off, commissions off, but it's not going to be here for a long time quite yet. Mercury and Venus will go swiftly through there, will be there like a month. However, though, it's what what, what comes to mind when a planet transits is what we want to uh, take note of because it's showing where our mind is going to focus and this is where you want to capture. The good news in that respect is that by the end of the month, on the 25th there, Jupiter, the, 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 the grand giver of abundance, will be moving into this area uh, and stay there for a whole year. So to me it's more like the beginning of the month you will be contemplating, brainstorming, uh, starting up some uh, uh, epiphanies and, and genius ideas, just kind of putting the framework in there. Then behind it comes uh, uh, Jupiter to expand it. Anything Jupiter touches expands it big time. So so it's going to go in there, be there for a whole year. So you can see that you this year, uh, from July onwards, you're going to be making a whole lot more money than just your monthly income check from your, your should I say, day job. Okay, That is one thing. This is additional monies coming in. And you can do really good with that, so I hope you're going to take the best advantage of it. Now, on the, the new moon here on the 8th, it's going to be also in your 7th house partnership. So I think a lot of this could be brainstorming with a partner, sharing ideas, you know, making mutual agreements, because the 7th house is a 50-50 kind of, you know, JV scenario, joint venture. Um, it will also be, of course, with relationships and romantic uh, situations, a good time to also place in some intentions of how you want that to look for the coming month, for the full year coming in until next year this time. How do you want that relationship to look like? What is it you want to achieve in a partnership? This is the time to look at it. You won't have another chance to actually create the new moon energy seeds. And think about the eclipse last month, okay? Powerful eclipse. It's still affecting all of us right now on this new moon. So you're getting like still a double whammy energy. So be creative. Express it. You know, Mercury's in a great uh, position here to communicate what it is you see. And you can do more than one thing because it's in the sign of Gemini. And Gemini is very versatile, as you know. So I know that you Sagittarius have a lot more than just one talent going on. You have multiple talents. You know, so, so kind of shake them around. Put it out there. See what can come from it. You know, inspire yourself. That will be great here for June. And then we also have here Mercury going retrograde on the 23rd. So uh, not a good time to sign any new contracts. That Mercury will be in your 8th house for commissions. So if there is new paperwork coming in, I'd say try to delay it until 3rd week of July. Even though that sounds like a delay, conscious delay on your part. Uh, however, it can be delayed for months if you do sign. So it's better to delay 3 weeks than delay many, many months. Uh, that's what Mercury retrograde, retrograde can do, and especially in a financial house like uh, the 8th house. It's like, ooh, now we're talking contracts, now we're talking money. <laughs> you know, so, yeah, if you can uh, delay, that will be awesome for you. And then we have also this Mars. It's in your 7th house. I see you really picking up energy, you know, and going with it, going the distance. Um, should I say getting out more to your partners, uh, um, what should I say, more proactive as well and uh, I just see you just like happy being alive because it's been tough. It's been tough for a lot of you Sagittarians and you know I have a lot of you as daily clients, <clears throat> weekly clients as well. 
But we're working through where things feel like it's just been like a bottleneck, you know, where things have been tough. Whether this is your career, it has been for a lot of you, and for others of you, it has been relationship and financial situations pushing through this bottleneck. So, you know, we know all about that, but it's like it's starting to lift and rise now that the planets are going up to the upper part of your chart. You should start seeing the light a whole lot more, and that will uh, pay off. Now, I want to end this with the full moon because we're talking about that full moon also with the power of that last full moon eclipse last month. It's still with us. For you, it's in the second house, okay? And the second house is everything financial of personal income not like the eighth house other people's money commissions um so when we have a full moon here it's like there is something to be harvested it's something coming to you that's going to be potent and transformational pluto transforms anything it touches and here it's going to be touching smack on your full moon in the second house of income so magic may happen here you may shed, you know, whatever has been difficult. And I know a lot of you have had a lot of uh, tough times here financially. That may start disappearing altogether. Pluto, the beauty of a positive Pluto, is that transformation that takes place. And it can go to the total opposite direction. So not saying that it's all going to come in at once. But at the time there on the 23rd, take a little time to meditate and have a full moon seance. Uh, with yourself as you visualize how you want the rest of this year to be to be powerful and strong and let me just share with you like I told the others I don't normally do a whole lot of getting into details of the uh, um, of astrology that you don't understand because I know you just want to hear what's coming but I want to show you this formation that we're having this uh, this month a kite as you can see it's a kite and uh, it, it's just beautiful because these planets here are very, very powerful. We have the sun, which is you, and then we have your ruler, Jupiter. They're together here conjunct, side by side in the skies. And so this is very uplifting. We're talking here on the 23rd uh, under the full moon. Down below here, we've got the full moon and Pluto, as you can see here. So they're kind of opposing each other, but they're tied in with Neptune and Saturn. Now, Neptune loves to dream. You know, it's so idealistic and has beautiful dreams, you know, endless dreams. Jupiter will expand anything it touches. So we're not talking about a little dream here. Jupiter being here is saying, hey, you know, dream big or go home. Jupiter expands, you are right here. So you're expanding with this dream. Don't limit yourself. Saturn normally will limit and say, hey, be realistic now. You know, you can't think like that. That's too much. It's too big. It's unachievable. Saturn is that realism, you know, that cold water in the blood. <clears throat> but Saturn is anchored in and in Scorpio, which with intensity here, saying to Jupiter, hey, listen, Jupiter, I got your back and I got Saturn's back. These things are trying and these are six tiles. So they're all perfectly aligned. And they're anchoring into Pluto, which is regenerative. It's transformative. <clears throat> it's you coming out of this cocoon, now finally becoming the butterfly. I'm hoping this is going to touch all of you Sagittarians. And I would love for you to come back and, and give us your comments down below so everybody else can share with your experience. What did this do for you? Because not only the powerful full moon Pluto, but also how it's tying in with the overflow that we've had from this whole series of eclipses that we've had. And uh, especially because, yes, you have had a hard time. And I would hope to see that Jupiter is going to expand and lift you up now out of the ashes like the bird phoenix here. All right. So I want to end that on this note. And uh, I will see you next month, Sagittarius. Listen to your moon sign and your rising sign and I'll see you soon. Bye now.